you about ready, boy? Take two, motherfucker. Oh, <laughs> urban toilet blues, bitches. Welcome Original. to the goddamn podcast for the second uh, time. It's your boy Trevor. Invisible. It's your boy Chris. I'm invisible now because I have my cool guy shades on. He's doing the whole uh, big, big daddy, daddy thing. <laughs> if he puts his uh, invisible shades on, people can't yell at it's him. Like for the things. IRS just shows up. I just put them on. Like, nope, I don't exist. You can't deal with him anymore. Deal. Welcome to the podcast, folks. It's two lonely boys in a canoe for the first time on motherfucking video. Ooh. What's happening? Yeah, yeah. Gradient's been kind enough to help the us The Gracious out. Gradient. Yeah, to oh, help shit, us out with yeah. the video. Ooh. Bad Gradient, I thought I was. Ooh, if the bad boy. Say that I'm, I'm, this is my bad persona up in here. Yeah, you know, that's man. true. It's all but you can only art. be as bad as Gradient is in your mind. Is Gradient like a real bad dude? Ooh. Is, he, is Gradient is a like, a, like, a, like a soul bringer, man? Is he a soul bringer? Is <laughs> he bringing the soul in the funk? I ain't never thought about it too much. This shit ain't about me. You right, you right, but you know what? You're here, bro. You're here. The gentlemen that are brave enough to be on camera. Hey, you know what? You only got to be brave, man, to be here. (laughs) Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? If it could happen to you, You it could happen happen to me. me. Shout out Jamie from the Trailer Park Boys. I like to order 17 half-eaten cheeseburgers. Uh, Ooh. Wait, wait, what's this I hear? Oh, oh, all these fries and shakes? So, oh. so, Trevor, this is our first video. I know. Are you excited? I'm very excited. Okay, so what, what do you have to say to the people? They first, can finally see you. Dance moves. Dance moves? All right. Dance moves. Oh, that's Dude. why I left so much negative space up top. You can really Of course, you got to stretch it out. You got to stretch it out. <laughs> wait, wait, we should do the turkey one. Just the, the basic turkey where you do this wait, and I'll do this. Wait, what is it? You do this, okay, and I'll do this. Gobble la, gobble, la, bitches. La. They can't see uh, two dimensions, Trevor. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Now you're gonna you're, you're gonna know what it's like to alienate your audio audience. Oh too. God, gonna, like, it's gonna be so tough. Wait, wait, wait. not explaining them. We also we also got dinosaurs. Trevor, they can't see the dinos on the table. Exactly. Just just make them do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It welcome to the me podcast. Of a, like a Dimitri Martin bit. If you yes. Ever been a fan. He is a funny dude. Yeah. He kind of fell off. I think his writing was really great. I think yeah. he had depression. That was one of his mm. things. Mm. Yeah. He, yeah. I don't know if he was ever really born to be like as famous as he got in a way. He was very good at what he did, and what he did was right. take basic uh, setups and make them very intricate. Yeah. And I love that, man. It's well, such a good way to be a comic. Yeah, he's very analytical. I don't know, I don't know who he is. Oh, okay. To be he does Martin, a little bit of guitar, with the guitar playing, too, sometimes. I think you'd like him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he had a guy come up, uh, Will Forte. Yes. And there yes. was some shit where... He was the dude I, I that did was, McGruber. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> such a weird I, movie. I think I'm not getting mixed up Will Forte and some other dude. Will Ferrell or something like that. Because he did do have a bit with Will Ferrell for his the These Are Jokes special. Yes. Uh, well, they were Will on Ferrell SNL Ferrell. together. Right. Oh, yeah, okay. that's how they kind of knew each other. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but um, the cool bit was... It. The fucking person was like explaining what's happening to the audio listeners and Very shit. Very true. And anyway, like Dimitri just, was, you know, you gotta see the guy, but he's got a bowl haircut and he's yeah. kind of a dorky looking guy. <laughs> he said, like, uh, he said, my barber seemed to think that when I walked in and asked for a haircut, I thought I said, can I have a haircut? But he thought I said, Gay Beetle, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. That's yeah, funny. and the guy explaining, he, he just goes, to explain to the audio, Demetrius looks like a gay beetle. <laughs> yes. Okay, gay beetle. Mm. <laughs> it's a hard day's night. Been working like a dog. Ah! <laughs> I 
I mean, of the remaining Beatles, don't you think that, like, <coughs> don't you think there's some gayness, you know, in Ringo and Paul? Definitely, but I think the Beatles were always kind of gay. Yeah. You know, they weren't exactly the most heterosexual. Mm. Now, you go ahead and tell me Axl Rose is gay, I'm going to be like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> tell me Slash is gay, I'm going to be like, I don't believe that one, man. But the Beatles definitely... He just gets too much ass. Slash gets too much <laughs> pussy to be gay. Like Brett Michaels, he could never be gay. He just gets all much. the poison pussy. But, I mean, Beatles were definitely a model that a lot of boy bands followed. Like, they were they were one of the they first They were the NSYNC. They yeah, were the, the NSYNC of the them and Them and the Beach Boys were the NSYNC of the early 60s, so. Yeah. Well, my dad didn't really want to go because... Uh, you got a boogie. I got a... Oh, right sorry, no, you're fine. I was I was letting oh, you know. Geez, Folks, l- little uh, <laughs> Two Lonely Boys context. If you ever have a boogie, let a buddy know. Yeah, great. Yeah. 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 There's a big old boogie right on his beard. It's still there. Yeah, a little oh, yeah, bit. Yeah, it's yeah, okay, yeah, but uh, it's better know. than oh. ignoring that. I, I always oh, feel yeah. that, like, if you ignore that, then or that a means a lot worse off of you. Why would you... a leaf on someone's front tooth. Tooth so or something? Yeah. How could you allow them to walk around that way and, like, like ten- maybe interact with people? Maybe a or- tentacle randomly sprouts out you know of their what? forehead? I mean, shit happens. You know, yeah. for real, though, I, I know that this is a comedy podcast, but I do get weirdly analytical about shit. I believe that might have to do with people not wanting to share with others that there's a subtext that we're always judging each other's looks. Oh, 100%. But yeah, that yeah, is yeah. the problem, is that when you ignore yeah, that subtext, it. you are creating another uh, reality, basically, where nobody ever judges anybody's appearance. Mm. But that's not true, because that's how we dictate our lives. We we look at people, like, you see somebody shady on the right. fucking sidewalk, you cross the road and stuff. Right. But I think we well, live in a bubble you, right like, now. I leave the city. Exactly. Yeah, I'd yeah, fucking leave the city if I saw me walking. Other side of the road is are, you, far are you seeing me under the bridge at, you know, 7.45 in the morning? Like, <laughs> what's this guy doing? I think here? it's hard for people to admit that we all judge each other and we all have some positive and some negative feelings. Yeah. But, like, at the end of the day, if you can work with somebody and create, you know, something great... Mm. It all works out, hopefully. <laughs> Trevor's cool as shit right now. Trevor, tell these people about what we got coming up, man. We oh, got man. all these topics, and we we're ain't even getting of, to we're them. We're just a bunch of cool guys doing cool things, trying to be cool right man, now. And you know fun. it. <laughs> Shout out to Animal Burst, but yeah. Nice. So we did a we did an intro. Yeah, we got we got, <laughs> we got a. <laughs> so we have uh, we have Littlefoot here. Yep, Littlefoot, and then Reptar. Reptar. Mini Reptar. Also oh, yeah. also the bong. Oh, they can see the bong now. I guess. That you guys have been you hearing so worried forever. About, you were yeah. so worried about people seeing Whatever. <laughs> this, is the, this is the bong you guys have been hearing all these episodes. Trevor is so excited for the video, folks. I don't oh think God. you realize he's sitting up out of his seat right now. <laughs> but yeah. So we got, uh, for news, we got local news, and you, uh, <laughs> Gradient had a good point, and I actually did a little research, but uh, increased car break-ins here at Mount Pisgah. Yes, yes. Did, what did you? I say anything? No, I didn't no, say No, I, I think that was me. You, <laughs> yeah. and then, um, also I think Dylan mentioned it. I'm well, sorry. I was... I get so many stories, sometimes I forget who tells me, like, sure somebody enough. told me. But, uh, recently I just heard of Mount Pisgah having a lot of break-ins. It's a little bit rural of an area, um, there's not a ton of cameras and stuff. I think there's one at the main entrance, but, like, other than that, um, so people that are living on the outskirts of town have found it very easy to go and break into cars while I people actually hike. I did a little so, research Oh, on sure. Go ahead. KEZI, ABC. Yep. That's our local affiliate. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> That's they, a funny word, affiliate. Affiliate. But they talked about how 11 incidents reported during the first half of 2022 and then nearly 40 the last six months. Yeah. So, I mean, almost 30% quadrupled. increase. Well, almost or quadrupled. 300% but, increase. <laughs> So they're trying to figure out why, and they're trying to install cameras, obviously, in like the busy areas when you're first. You should definitely have cameras where the cars are, just to be able to see somebody going up to the cars. But yeah. I, it's a, it's a sad part about living in an area that's nice and that has uh, natural beauty is that I think a lot of the times people like to think that oh bad things won't happen at the park, you know. But you're not that far out of town, like. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some there's still people. There's that some can, people. There's some people who'll come up on a bicycle wearing some like weird hats and they'll just show up and all of a sudden all your stuff is gone. Like, yeah. What? Yeah, no idea. yeah, baby. We yeah. out here. And then on the topic of theft, though, I did get see some videos about this guy, Mark Rober, has some huge YouTube videos I'd never seen. They got like 
45 million views, 95 million views. Have you seen his Glitter Bomb versus Porch yes, Pirates? Yes, that is amazing to watch. I, people yeah. that create their own little Porch Pirate Bombs, I'm 100% for that. Yeah. Because if you're stealing shit off of people's front porch, right. something deserves to happen to you. I don't know what, mm. but something. An if intervention it just, needs to occur. And if somebody needs to catch you. I think yeah. that that happens when somebody catches you doing it. That's a real, like, deterrent from doing it again. One of the craziest you know? ones right. I've seen is a guy sticks his arms through the mailbox, and there's this big dude just waiting for two-by-four. As soon as he sticks his arm, he just smacks him. This, like, 300-pound big dude just, sweat, just slams it down on his arm. You hear the guy just do a blood-curdling scream, and you could tell that the guy's in, arm instantly was broken, just shattered. Damn. And then he had to try to get it out, and the guy is like, get it out, motherfucker. And he's trying to pull his now busted arm out of this <laughs> mail slot. Fuck. And this big dude is shaking the arm like, get out. And you could hear the guy just going, ah, ah, just oh. sobbing and terrified. And then he, sl- and he slumped out. Like, Damn. Damn, boy. That's what that you sounds get. Like a saw That's what you bit get. To me, you know? <laughs> video, but the glitter. Yeah, if you could just scare them and not well, necessarily when you, when scare you, the hell out of them. When you the think of when you, is also yes. part of that. <laughs> or diapers. People put diapers in a box and and somebody takes it. Oh, you know? oh That's you ma- great one. <laughs> Can you imagine Walter from Big Lebowski has has a bunch of dirty whites in a, in a bag? He's like, "What's mine <laughs> is mine." <laughs> oh, I would ah. like my underwear back, please. No, and I feel like you'd have to have the Amazon on tape because when you open a box you usually rip it through the tape very true you need the, the official tape to slap on there but a lot of people just don't care that much and they're yeah, just kind of they notice because they are f- fucking stealing yeah. shit you yeah. know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, local news what else Trevor what else we got but yeah shout out CV <laughs> Loop Road that's the road that you get off yeah uh, national news actually international national gorgeous George managed, managed to me I looked it up Texas man, he just confessed to decapitating newly undocumented wife. So in yeah, Texas... Yeah, that was a fucked up story. Yeah, Texas, they just had a uh, half million dollar bail for this 21-year-old Jared James Dykus. And they caught him because he had stolen a beer from a convenience store on the camera. Yeah, he, video. Was, he was drunk, and while he was drunk, he ended up killing his girl and after he was done killing his girl he went out to go get more beer and he didn't even care to pay for a beer he just grabbed it from the yeah. the convenience store and so walked yeah, the fuck out my wife's head off yeah. I'm gonna steal this Budweiser what's good well I mean yeah. you don't have much that you're not doing at that point man yeah. you've already committed murder you fucking decapitated a human you, you know, you're crossing your wife, some stuff yeah. off the list yeah. <laughs> you're, going, you're going full bad maybe you're crossing well maybe you're crossing the wrong things off your list yeah, yeah. You're in your villain era, as they would say. It's like hard Taylor to see, Swift or something. Well, it's hard to see young people, bro, with a lot of their life to live, making yeah. such crazy, drastic decisions young. You know, I'm going to murder my spouse. Like, that's something that has to come after years of, of hate. You know what I mean? Not yeah. not so brand new that it's your new wife. You know right. what I mean? You should love her, hopefully. Right. But something snapped in this dude, and he was just like, I got to get rid of this chick. And it, it sucks because she had a lot of family that was over here in the States. And that was, you know, one of the things she was coming here to, to well, live was, her life with her family. She was from Nicaragua, and she yeah. had people that she was living with. Yeah, also and over this here. dude was her ticket to a visa, and hopefully they could have made a marriage work maybe. But I don't know, man. That's the, the fucked up part is you never know all the story. You're going to get what the news will tell you. And apparently you never they, hear were, everything. they were on a, a small place on his parents' property. Yeah. So, that dude, I don't know, man. He definitely deserves to fucking get his head chopped off, but it's tough, man. Marriages are difficult, and just before you go killing somebody, maybe go see a therapist or something, you know? Maybe seek some other help. But, uh, Angie Diaz, that's her name. Yeah. Yeah. It's awful. It is sad, Trevor. Fuck. (laughs) Next subject. You know, it's actually funny, too, as I think about, like, I know we're cutting deep here with the topics right now. Lethal but. violence in the relationships, like, apart from... I just think, like, happens, my girlfriend man. probably could kill me. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> well, well, She keeps a gun, I don't. Well, when people... And, 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 I, and I if you're asleep... Her. I respect her. If she needed to kill me, you know what I'm saying? But there's a there's a point, you know what I mean, <laughs> nah, where where obviously you know something is wrong, and there are signs that somebody should be getting out of a relationship like that. Mm-hmm. But I think that people are more scared of being alone 
scared of being alone, don't and feel like they have any other options. Exactly. And so then you end you up can't trapped. can't imagine their life somehow without this person. Even if because it's maybe been a long time or it's all new. And, you know, the, the emotions that run in a person's mind before something like that happens right. is usually like something's off. You know, something doesn't feel right because somebody yeah. that would kill you, you know, that's a, that's a big step. True. Yeah. All right, Trevor, what else? So let me go back to local just real quick. Since I can finally do it now. Trevor's all about the news and the, the Foley Foley stage sounds. He wants to create a lot of content through, yeah, through sound like effects. Yeah, it's companion shit. But oh, yeah. Yeah. real quick from Eugene Weekly. Uh, this is actually stuff that hasn't happened yet, Chris. So it's not old news. New oh, news, I'm old news. Right <laughs> but, <laughs> it's not too blinding, I apologize. It's okay. But tomorrow happens to be Martin Luther King Day. So MLK a, Day. So there's a lot of events that are going on. They just uh, unveiled a statue, I think, in Chicago of Martin Luther King that they built. It was like $10 million. Damn. A big bronze statue. But it's kind of strange because it's of him hugging his wife, and it's not of them too. It's of their arms, how they were structured in a photo. Mm -hmm. And it's just weird because it's just four arms kind of nestled. Mm. But... I mean, if you're going to make a statue of MLK, maybe put him on it. You know what I mean? It's, some artist was like, they'll Why understand. So wait, wait. It, yeah. it doesn't even have his yeah. face? His arms. <laughs> yeah. Just his arms. Well, it's his arms and his wife's arms. They were in a photo where they were um, kind of hugging each other. But their faces aren't in it? Like, no. So it's just a pair of bronze arms. It's four arms nestled yeah, together. So Bring it up. Dumb. Bring it up, Gradient. That's what I'm here for. That is so dumb. I'm I telling believe you, you. I believe I'm you. I'm telling you, once you see this, you're going to be like, whoa, they spent $10 million on Someone that. is dumb. Well, I think that, you know, art is to a degree, you know, subjectable, but you shouldn't spend that much on a piece of art that you don't enough have people don't understand. Yeah. It's called the embrace. The embrace, yes. That shouldn't cost $10 million. It's ten, yeah, oh, see, it's wow. of a photo of him hugging his wife, but it's just the shoulders and that the arms. Dumb. I think they wanted so badly to be innovative, and it seems so artistic. But they the missed it somehow. It's you know dumb. what I mean? They did miss it, and well, ten million honestly, dollars the, for. I remember it. you guys were. Were you here when the blue heron went up? I don't think you were. No, because there was a lot Seven of hype years? around the blue heron. I was I here. Think they, it's not even here anywhere. They moved it, or maybe oh, they made a second one. Yeah, that but, one there. Yeah, yeah, that one there. That's what I'm talking about. Yep, I'm not yep. going to give away your location, but no. anyone around camp knows that blue hair definitely yeah. everybody yeah. climbs on it well it used and to be people I've seen, yeah. I I've seen a lot of people that. climb it it's so just drunk students man and homeless people yeah people that are drunk well, and messed up the longest time it was like we just they just rolled out the platform man. yeah and they hyped it up hyped it up this is the platform this platform so you you hyped the shit up and they got a weird ass bird, yeah weird some eyes. strange bird baby yeah. <laughs> I like it I like it for it's sure. cool but you know very uh, indicative of how new art wants to be you know avant garde and on the edge but yeah. they miss the basics sometimes <laughs> if you have a statue of Martin Luther King and his wife maybe he should be in it or maybe she should be in it <laughs> Not just their arms and it's shoulders. It's like still crazy. I've seen yeah, pictures 10 million too. Bucks. Of, yeah, I've seen pictures too of like playgrounds where it's like a smiling banana guy, and the slide comes out right where a penis would be. It's well, like, the reveal the must fuck? be such a such yeah. a headache. You know, the the person that does it is like voila, and everybody in the crowd goes woo. Well, no, they probably don't initially do that, but you know, the second they step away, they're like, what the hell was that, man? You talked about Prairie Home Companion. I don't mean to cut butt in too much as a producer, but a good topic that I think, oh, unless you want to get to something, is soundboard like shit. Like, if you want yes. to fucking add in some shit, yeah. it's awesome and I can work on ways to get that going, but also the crux of it is what exactly. examples, what exactly. you want pull things from movies. This that, is something you know, we should lines. come back to because we already had this conversation oh, before shit. you got here, but it's up here. We, we it's up also, here boiling and simmering. We also do a lot of sound effects. I do a lot. Of these, we're gonna we're gonna come up with a combination of the two: our own sound effects plus sounds that we have recorded. So I mean, you still have we're trying to find the medium that we're gonna use to you kind have of do it from there. Yeah. Then you have like us doing. You know, we're gonna get it, folks. I'm telling you, it's slow improvements, balls. but you come back in in two to three to four episodes. This, this is gonna be dialed cool. in so hard. We're gonna be in so oh, yeah. hard. <laughs> so hard. I'm glad to see you, folks. So yeah, there's going to be a uh, breakfast nine to nine thirty a.m. at uh, Hill Hill Illumin. I don't know. What are we Some talking place. about? Breakfast. Yeah, the breakfast for the Martin Luther King. The Hill. Something. Nobody's making this this know. breakfast, Trevor. Alumni. That's it. Alumni. Yeah, alumni. Yeah, I, I was that. like, what is it's, that it's word? It's like aluminum. Yeah. 
Hill Alumni Circle, and then it's going to bunch of stuff on campus going on, like Back in the Streets, Resiliency and the Audacity of Joy. It's going to be a march. It's going to be 10.30 a.m. in Eugene Springfield, NAACP, and they're going to have a lot of marches, you know, stuff in Springfield all over. This is kind of crazy what I'm seeing here. This Lovell kid is, uh, he was an African immigrant who was William brought, over, Lovell. brought over by a guy, David Lovell, who just won the Lane County Commissioner seat. Well, you want to bring uh, that a little closer, Trevor? Field? I don't know. Yeah, if you want. Show the picture. Yeah, dude. I'll hold that shit up. Because uh, it's a really interesting story, man. I mean, I don't want to get into it too much. But uh, uh, this dude here. Yeah, dude, ah! William, yeah, so. I don't know anything about this Why guy. Why don't you the go into wrote, it for a little bit? Um, well, okay, yeah, so he's he's a right-leaning guy, and, yeah. he, and he's like, he the this campaign against original Joe guy that brought the child, right? Yeah, exactly, he's David Lovell, he's right? been a pastor at a church, he's written a couple ah, of books. That makes and, sense. Um, and so it's been interesting, because like, for example, during BLM and shit, mm. and, and protests that that I was a part of, that I saw sure. I was around, it was very, very, very non, it was, it was legitimate, like, angry, frustrated, genuine protest that wasn't destroying things as far as I as far you know as yeah. far as I what you could was say. aware yeah. and, you know and around the ones I tended to go to Both. and Excuse he me. showed up with like an A with like a, a strap with a fucking this is the same uh, situation that happened with that um, kid the mm. one that shot the two Rittenhouse. protesters Rittenhouse, oh, Rittenhouse. yeah Kenosha Washington dude he was such a kid. fucking bitch on the stand but well, he knew him on he knew <laughs> he knew that that fake ass crying it would get him off that's yeah. the sad Sometimes part. I've had LeBron annoying. I, I try not to like put too much stock. Politics in and general. sports, they just don't <laughs> really go really, together it's well. Really, <laughs> it's really. I weird. did like how LeBron talked about the fucking recent shit. He kind of was like t- the Dallas uh, owner of the Cowboys. Mavericks. That fo- or was it Mavericks? I think it was thing. actually Cowboys. Okay. Was, uh, owner of the Cowboys was there was a new photo of him like standing in between the little black like black children trying to go to school. Oh, of course. And it was, like, br- brutal, and, like, no one talked about it's it. It's like, this is the Cowboys. LeBron we don't allow a, you to LeBron educate. Had a good moment. The, yeah. the press after a game was like, you know... What do you asked, think? And he was like, I just want to take a moment to talk about how you guys asked me so much about the Kaepernick stuff, but you haven't asked me anything about this. And Boom. I, don't know. I think that politicizing the things in sports is ridiculous because they're athletes, but these athletes are people. And I think that that's what people forget is that they're not just a side fucking show for you to pay a bunch of money to go see and watch a bunch of big tall black dudes dunk a basketball. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's not what these people are. They are athletes that are paid well, but mm-hmm. they have lives and personalities and depression and, you know, all sorts of needs like humans. How that's how the that? Indiana Pacers thing uh, still Six blows my mind. Um, the malice in the palace. You yeah, know, we these people were we throwing a ton of shit at them. They were more or less defending their fucking teammates when one went into the crowd. And then, you know, all these people just turn and fucking, yeah. they're like, all oh, these people, they came in here and they beat us all up. You were, you were sitting there cursing and throwing things at a giant tall Adam, black dude, yeah. and you don't want him to react like any human being would. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're expecting him to hold himself? I don't think it's so. I would ex- fuck you up. Second like you start throwing yeah. things at me. <laughs> it's like the expression, you play super games, you win super prizes. Very like, true. Mm. Very true. But people tend to forget that. I was a huge fan of Pistons in that era, bro. Especially because oh, Rashid, Pistons were good. She brought me Rashid into it because I bro. had so much love for him as a Blazer. Yep. But then just like all those guys in that team. So that was a really when cool. Phillips came up as a potential Blazer coach. The, like, yeah. the early 2000s to the late 2000s was a really cool era because there was a ton of like people coming up in weird teams. You know, uh, there like, was a like ton of Golden weird State, teams. The Golden good State Warriors, perfect example. Yeah. They, they, they right. taking uh, over. And I remember the Cavaliers getting LeBron. Yeah. yeah. It's nuts. He went to Miami, Miami for a yeah, while. Yeah, Miami Heat when they had him and Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade, Wade and yeah. Chris Bosh. That, that was awesome. That great until they had Dirk and Dirk and, and, Nash. and Nash, yep. Yeah. Fucking basketball talk. What's up, yo? I Local actually, sports I actually, and shit. I actually like <laughs> basketball, too, more than I All right, what else we got, Trevor? We're, we're losing quick. daylight. All right. We don't have any daylight, motherfucker. I know, exactly. That's the problem. All right. <laughs> so Tuesday, we got... Pruning fruit trees, hands on, 1.30 to 3.30 p.m., Grassroots Garden, 1465, Coburg Road, $10 donation. 
Register at 541-344-5859. This guy's losing it, folks. He's losing it, and he's just trying to read the newspaper at this point. The Bro, first time he's ever had... Come on, I'm throwing out shit it's right now. It's weird to think ah, he's someone losing would it. want to go straight from bas- NBA basketball to fruiting fruit trees. I'm so excited. I've waited too long. Trevor. See this. See this. Calm down. Ah. <laughs> Anyways. I'm the most excited person. So we have the uh, alum... Ridge Boys and Ashley Bluegrass at uh, 8 p.m. It's going to be at Sam Bonds and 407 Blair... Blair Alley. Bl- yeah, Blair Alley, Blair Boulevard, $5. And then we have, for our last thing, gatherings we have retired senior providers from Lane County, 2 p.m., holiday at Atria Senior Living. Holiday Road. 2525 25, Cal Young Road <laughs> Free. So we want to just hang a bunch of old people at a party. Old people are there cool. You go. They get down just before 5.30. So that's my uh, random silly news. All right, Trevor. Deal with the gradient. All right, (laughs) Trevor. I don't know the balance yet of how much you guys just direct the show at me. So I think that we're all figuring that out together, man, because I like having you a part of it. I I didn't envision when we got a producer to have him as much of a part of it, but I like the dynamic. He also wants you to team up against me. That's what he said. No, not at all. (laughs) Oh, oh, Grady, do you like like Swedish fish or do you like the peach rings more? It's not a hard choice. It's not a hard choice. Tahini flavored peach rings versus Swedish fish. There's some Darth Sidious shit over here. He's trying to take over... Okay, it's chess, not Yoda. checkers. Yoda. I'm Yoda, bitches. It's all good. All right, next subject. <laughs> all right, world news, real quick. Russian missile strike kills at least 23. Yeah, Russia's trying to, Ukraine, trying to fight back. Southeast Ukraine. We were sitting there the other day, Stone talking about we should just go to Ukraine and fight a war. Just fuck it. I mean, <laughs> what are we doing with our lives, man? We got a podcast we need to bring to the front lines, you know? We bring this podcast to the front lines. Comedy is going to change, but it'll still yeah. be there somewhat. The subject matter will get a lot darker real quick. But yeah, probably. Because it talked about bringing things to the middle lines or the back lines. Front lines. Because the front man. lines get wiped out it, pretty quick. fast. <laughs> the <laughs> reasons, the front lines. It's tough. Oh, iPhone storage full. Okay, I'll put on my other phone. And okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get in there real quick and it won't be a big deal. Nice. We'll good. So right, we're Thanks just doing that. some uh, we're doing some switching right now of camera phones. Oh yeah, dude, but we barely lost nothing, man. We'll check, 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 angle. check it out. And I'll definitely Ooh, cut out the part Shout out Beastie hours. Boys. <laughs> Oh, Calling all of y'all, Christy. it's a sabotage. Actually, the Listen cool thing about that. It's a sabotage. The cool thing about what just happened with the video, okay, uh, is that. Oh shit! I have to blur myself out on that. We're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this again? Man? <laughs> again, this is a learning process. Nah, yeah, it's me. It's just it's like a slightly different shade of me. You're gonna try yeah. to hide in the closet from this podcast as long as you can, but one of these days you're gonna get, we're gonna get you well, out. I think it might be, the, it, but it'd be funny if it became the thing. It's like it's possible. The Wait, pod and us. Yeah, you know, I think there's like, potential. You could be like the potential. guy from. Um, Home improvement. The neighbor you never see all of his face. Wilson. You just, yeah. Is he yeah, gonna be Wilson. You'll be Wilson. You're gonna hang out like over the, the fence and give us like, life advice. Who is he? I don't know, man. But he's mysterious and he gives us good advice. Yeah, <laughs> but he has a lot of sweet local news. I love it. I feel like we were at the point where we didn't know where to go any further. We didn't know how to go much further. We didn't yeah. even know. And so that's why we had to add in a third brain. And we, we were didn't like, know we enough need to somebody even know else. where to really start, really. Like, I just, we're just like a drunk guy in the fog. And like, right. Well, I think that's most well, of the things in life. You fake it until you kind of learn a little bit, and then right. you'll, you work fake from it there. Till, kids, fake it till you make it. It's good, new, it's good advice. The teachers don't have all the answers. They, they got don't. answer keys. You know what I mean? So <laughs> let's, let's sit here well, and, and act for real. You're going to use your cell phone to look up answers. We know this, kids. <laughs> but just try to limit the cheating. You know, yeah. I don't know where I'm going, but ah, damn I mean, it. I gotta. They lie to you. Grind. We were told that the food pyramid was a thing, and then then we finally they're like, oh, it's just lobbyists because certain food groups want you to buy their. Yeah, products milk's kind lies. of a lie. Milk's kind of a lie. Yeah. <laughs> also, also, oh, al- also, there being a, a sub- milk's great. Milk's yes. delicious. But you shouldn't do anything that much. You shouldn't overdo a good thing. Yeah, you're not going to drink it and be able to swim like Michael Phelps. Like, it's not going to, it's not a thing. I'm not suggesting you drink a whole gallon of chocolate milk, but I'm saying maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> if you want to make a funny video and puke on somebody, potentially. But, Trevor, get the milk. <laughs> ah! <laughs> All right, what do we got, man? We're getting off topic, but that's our style, baby. Now, we, uh, we could do real quick movie review. 
if you want to talk about Sure. I watched Megan. a few movies here recently. I can't remember the one, but one of them that I did watch was that new movie, Megan. It's about an animatronic uh, doll that is created by this uh, young girl. Spoiler alert. There's going to be some spoilers. <laughs> Um, yeah, this young girl's uh, driving with her parents to some ski on. resort, some ski shades. thing, and uh, they wipe out on an icy road, and her parents are killed in the accident. Um, Those, oh, you are spoiling it. I was uh, spoiler watch. alerts, man. You gotta, you gotta be here for you're this. Good, bro, but what ends up happening is the aunt takes on the responsibility of the child, and she is an engineer that works for some stupid company that creates a bunch of animatronics and stuff. But she's like very on the brink of uh, having a uh, animatronic creature that's very AI and like you know human. Um, so she brings it and oh, gives it Skynet. to the girl. She gives it to the girl. She is kind of like a Terminator. Yeah. She gives it to the girl as a dude. as a companion, and the girl starts to develop unhealthy relationships with the robot. Um, in the in the sense that she's not creating normal human relationships anymore. Mm. Um, so weird it becomes her best friend, and the aunt basically doesn't realize that a lot of weird shits happening. Yeah. Like the dog next door goes missing, and fucking a bunch of weird shit starts There's happening. There's this boy that gets that gets fucked up. I actually did watch a brief scene of the movie. I saw. So, scene where the boy gets fucked up. Yeah. She grabs his ears and damn near rips them off. You know the problem with bad boys is? Yeah. They grow up to be bad men. And then ah! she rips this kid's ear off. She just rips it off. So what ends up happening is at a point they figure out that Megan's behind it and they're trying to get away from her but she has superhuman strength. She's a crazy robot at this point. <laughs> um, and it's crazy at the end of the scene that got me and I think is in the trailer for it is there's a really weird dance move scene that she does Whoa. there's like a hallway scene where she's chasing a guy down a hallway and she's like before she starts chasing him he's like Megan and uh, she starts doing this really weird dance and, and I think that that's <laughs> what got me to want to watch it I was like what is this dance she's doing and it's one scene in the movie she never does it again but that small dance move got me interested enough to be like, what the hell is this? So, and for everyone to know, Chris is turned on by robots to do weird, sexy dance moves. Apparently, I'm just saying, women, Which you can women, tell you by need the, to, about it. women, you need to start getting it together because if men get good enough at making female robots, there's gonna be a problem. There's gonna be a real <laughs> issue if we start trying to replace you with with robots. I mean, there's other countries that's already happening. So <laughs> it is, but yes. it's in a stage where See? it's not as realistic yet. Yeah. When we get good at it, man, it's gonna <laughs> be a problem. I mean, you guys we, are getting too toxic. You're getting too manosphere, bro. Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> here really. Do you think that we're lying? Local <laughs> podcasters deride <laughs> women for. <laughs> Hey, you, you gotta, gotta speak being, the truth, and that's the problem uh, with this podcast. They want to hey, shut the truth great. down. You want to hear a joke real quick? <laughs> Women's rights. Let's go. No. 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 I I've been holding all these jokes back, but. No, I want to hear a joke, are, Trevor? Women women are great. Hear a joke, Trevor? We're just throwing some shit right now. This is a paid gig. Trevor, you want to hear a joke? Yes. I endorse your views. Equal pay. But uh, <laughs> oh, what's the difference between meat and fish, Gradient? <laughs> Why are you trying to get at me? What is it? Because men usually beat their meat, not their fish. Okay. That one wasn't as good. Moving on. All right. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Folks, we have fun. We just kid. And if you take this serious, well, that's on you. Yeah. There you go. So moving on. Made clear. True. Well, that's the sad part is like we have to have a well, disclaimer or something. Because, yeah, because you know, we, we do technically like we do not feel that way, but we feel it is hilarious to say those type of things in context. And people should when know you take things kidding. out of context, you're just you're getting all crazy. I think it also kind of matters where you guys come from in your real day to day life, and we don't have to get to that and talk about it. But it's like it would be one thing if you guys are with the tiki torches sure. in, in real life. No, yeah. no, we're not. You think that's just dumb as I fuck think that just, people think don't know. Way, all of it's dumb. Well, I think, I think people, people don't know people where regardless. to turn, and yeah. so they look for the group dynamic. They're so afraid of being an individual and not being a part of whatever little group, you know? So these people get together, and they start hating something together, and it's something for them to hate and bond But over. like, hey, we're going to do this fire. We're going to have a good barbecue. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, Margaret, she's going to make these cool outfits for us. It's going to be great. The funniest like, oh. scene I ever saw for, for like, hate and racism was Django the Django Unchained. Unchained the, where, where Don where, Johnson's in it. No. It's a good movie. <laughs> there's, a scene, a little there's a scene where the KKK is about to do their first, like, raid. 
And <laughs> they have these really sh- <laughs> they have these really shitty hoods that were made by somebody's wife. And they all they're start complaining farmers, about how they can't there, see yeah. out of the hoods, and they're not, the holes aren't cut the same. And, and like, Don Johnson's the main guy, and he's it's trying it's to a deal ridiculous with <laughs> it's a ridiculous argument to have before you're going to murder some people. Right, right. But I'm sure that's happened somewhere with maybe a group, like even a cartel. Like I'm sure there's been there's some always random been something. tiny <laughs> argument. You're like, bro, we got to do this. Like, no, no, we need to talk about the seat right now. Like, in, bro, in everything, right now? In, in fucking every bad situation there's, there's always logistics yes. there's always problem with the things details. going on <laughs> so it's funny to watch that play out and then in the end I think they ride down to the raid to get the guys and there's a bomb planted they just shoot the bomb and blow up a bunch of KKK members <laughs> it's hilarious because they couldn't see that was the whole problem they were riding down they couldn't see that close and they're like he's not in here boom oh. <laughs> it's hilarious yeah um. Who made these? Willard's wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time you can get your own. Yeah, you get your off. own damn masks. And they're all upset because somebody made them poorly. <laughs> Such so. a bad conversation. <laughs> Sounds hilarious. You should see I it. Seen it's that a funny Tarantino scene. Movies. He's I all like, right. I like Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction's great. Yeah. Name your uh, top two Tarantinos. I like. I would definitely take Pulp Fiction up there. The other one I, I like that's kind of a sleeper is Hateful Eight. Okay. Hateful Eight is a really weird one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think about any, oh, For oh, me, I'd have to. Like, I'd have to go Dogs with. 17. Yeah. I was actually. I was going to pick obviously. Reservoir Dogs is definitely one I'd, I'd, I'd have up there, and then Pulp Fiction. But Reservoir Dogs is good because it's just like this gritty crime movie, and all this crazy shit happens in like this very nondescript industrial section of Los Angeles. I think that the thing that tends to get me a lot with movies like Tarantino, especially the way he directs, is that he has his ability to be in the movie, too. Like, he's a part of it, for sure. Mm. Um, but he shoots out a sequence a lot in oh, yeah. all of his movies. And, and Pulp Fiction, another one I remember. I can, I can do a movie Not that is shot out of sequence, but it has to be good. You know what I mean? Because Dude. when you're switching scenes and timelines constantly, you can get thrown out of a movie very quickly. I was you know? thinking of bringing up uh, Memento, which is a Christopher Nolan movie. Okay. And he did, you know, he did The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight sure. Rises, The Prestige. Uh, bunch of, a bunch of good maybe flicks. another one with Christian Bale. Okay. Dude, I love Memento. It's yeah. Like that. Because we're talking about Inception. He did Inception. Before yeah. it started rolling, we are talking about that. How it yeah. can blow your mind. It's Memento? Movie. Yeah, Memento. I'm going to have to check that out. a guy named Guy Pierce. Do okay. Do you want to know a little bit about it? Sure, a little bit. Interest? Yeah. Bro, this guy has uh, you know, retrograde amnesia, I think is what it is, some shit. He can't form new memories that stay long term. Okay. And so he basically kind of wakes up or off or even during the day, his brain will basically kind of like reset and he won't really uh. remember where he is. He remembers like the fundamentals the of everything up until fifty like, first date scenario. Exactly, he exactly. loses the memories. Exactly, the short term memory loss. Mm. That's sort of what it comes down to. Very but cool. He kind of discerns or knows that he's in some kind of a fucking warlike battle. You yeah. Know? Like, and he needs to take out someone or someone's after him. Have that so deep he, he has gut to write feeling. Notes to himself, ah. and he has to take Polaroids of people and of things. Time. Immediately write notes on them on the yeah. back to be like kill this guy or like don't trust him or and and so then he wakes up and sometimes he misinterprets his own notes so what he really has to do is get shit tattooed on him yes so it, it's there you can't mistake it if it's tattooed to you yeah yeah, yeah memento really and megan double one, m movies i love yeah, that yeah um, i don't remember the name of the woman the main female lead in like matrix it's okay oh uh, um Moss. yeah is that yeah, her maybe she's in the is she the one that plays Whoever trinity Trinity, the woman who plays Katie Trinity, Moss, she's yeah. in. Okay. So Trinity is in the in the Mento, you know, it's precedes Matrix, I believe, and the one of the most harrowing scenes, dude. I won't give it away, really, but it's like, it's like uh, she like beats the fuck out of him, kind of thing. Okay. It leaves, comes back a moment later when she knows that he's forgotten, and uh, and he, she like plays the victim and stuff. The and video. Tends, oh, bummer. Okay. Well, ah. I have to get it going again on this, but it's okay. Just little interruptions, but I cleared okay. up more space on this. Nice. So now. Well, this is a. You're totally right, though, that this is a fucking uh, uh, 
trial by fire fucking that's what I'm saying we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna play with this I knew we're today play was gonna this. be an experiment day right. yeah the we're first playing time with doing the video folks thing. we yeah, are we are getting to... the bugs worked out more or less the, folks the, you're the, along with the journey you're with yeah. us you're, you're with the two the, lonely boys in our canoe the, ride, the canoe yeah. is a is a hyperbole for our apartment yeah well hyperbole means exaggeration be more like a it'd be more like a metaphor you're a metaphor. I'm I think you guys, if I'm you, yes. I'm just wondering what the fuck is Gradient like have all over his fucking phone that's clouded, clogging it's porn. all the memory. It's porn. It's fine. It's that okay, was... man. I got <laughs> porn on my phone too. <laughs> all the Trojan horses you get from porn, all the oh, cookies. Man. God damn it. Well, if there's a great scene. Muppet porn, it happens. If there's a great scene, I don't, I don't have that shit on my phone actually, but if there's a great scene like in, the, in my computer and shit. Worse. And sometimes that's just hard to find later, yeah. man. Sometimes and and having that something shit. that gives you a certain feeling when you're jerking off it, it's a nice thing to have a memory and a connection to because there's not a lot of those yeah. things in this world so the things that you really have a connection to like a good scene or mm-hmm. a good movie mm-hmm. you should fucking watch it what do you guys think about being sex positive or the phrase sex positive I don't care what you do in the bedroom don't be an asshole in public mm-hmm. that's the problem with everybody everybody has this this notion to let people know what their sexual affiliation is and you better know and accept me for who I am. I give no fucks who you are. I care about the character of the human. That's where I think there's that giant disconnect is people people have stopped trying to be good to each other. They're saying, accept me for everything and know everything about me instantaneously. And it's like that's the part where I will get to some agreement. Because yeah. you know it's things you say I don't I don't I don't agree, but I'll sure. I'm not about to fucking say you're a terrible person about it. Everybody feels how they want to feel, and that's the cool thing about being in America. You, you shouldn't hate everybody. Somebody has like the updated vocabulary and Hopefully. knowledge that you, you know. have when yeah. you're in a different place in the world, different age, yeah. different access to different schooling, or education, whatever, like different social worlds. Because social and political are no, so of course, man. Now. There's a lot of so places like, in the world where too. that that mindset is still ingrained in the people. Mm. The Middle East is really hard to to deal with because they're so religiously bound and they're so stuck in the ways of, of hating women a lot and Ooh, that creates this country, I, I, I don't have to name they names they both have <laughs> they both have their, their bad kinda. parts yeah they both have their bad parts and that's kind of where it's like where's the worst evil you know what I mean? Oh man, humans are all we're all bad, evil, man. and like, if we can accept not that to say fact, the societal guidelines and rules don't make a difference, but I think all humans. If are we all can accept that we're all beautiful. bad and beautiful, I love that bad and beautiful. <laughs> if we can accept that fact, we will learn to work with each other and and be better people. Hopefully, right. one day, because right. nitpicking the shit out of people for not feeling the same way you do. It's not constructive. You're building no bridges. I have a thought on it. Yes, sir. I think that people also... We guys were talking about how people wouldn't have different opinions but get along, but people tend to forget that there's always a gray area in most things. Like, most things are not just black and white situations. So (coughs) The world isn't one big college campus, unfortunately. So it's like... For example, like... Any situation, like, for example, I was going to Ukraine and Russia, like, oh, fuck the Russians. Like, a lot of these Russians didn't choose this. It's a few assholes up top, and then everyone below was like, that's oh, usually, deal with it, well, that's or else how all these bad things. I think a lot of wars work. You know, yes. there's people at the top creating decisions for the poor people to go settle for them. But even not necessarily yeah. war, but when you have, like, media trying to get people against each other, like, oh... You're either with us or you're against us. Like, whoa, wait I think, a second. I think that this the issue people. with the media mm-hmm. is that the media goes where the people that pay the media go. Of course. So the people that pay the media pay for certain things to be controversial and, and very brought up constantly. That's why the red and the blue is such a thing to watch. CNN got some of the really biggest... like the late 80s and 90s. Not at all. People used blue. to give no fucks about politics because there wasn't as much involvement. Now through technology and seeing your local congress and it's almost your, like it's almost like a, a football game now where you have your teams and they get all hyped and they C- have this gear. It's it's, it's very similar to CNN. That. I had a podcast guest M Five Vibe who said it's the same as gang members. It's just yes. gangsters in suits, dude. Hundred percent. Well, I mean, the, the U.S. Biggest, government is the biggest gang in the, the world. The biggest gang in the world, bro, the government. is the government. Yeah. yeah, because what they're doing is taking from the people that have less than them. To push their political gain, and they're like, and, hey, and we know if you're doing that either way, you know, yeah. right or wrong, for the greater good, See, you're doing why something my wrong. My interest in getting involved in local elected politics sure. and shit is sometimes met with like people that I would otherwise probably support a lot of the same goals. It's sure. kind of like, 
why the fuck would you even just go into government? Yeah. Because once you're in government, you think you're, you're a gonna part be of the system. Double lion that's gonna. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna eat you up, man. Welcome to the machine. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the machine. Uh, it, it's and interestingly. Four minutes left, so. so I've been trying to get to. It's okay. We're having fun. <laughs> Trevor's having a good time. Album review. Okay. So I actually listened to the artist Doja Cat. Ooh. And I listened to Did her. she keep it juicy, juicy? Did oh, she eat she that lunch? lunch? Yeah. <laughs> so the album is Planet Her. Came out last year, 2021. And the song I picked was Need to Know. And nice. it's about uh, doing certain naughty things, I guess you could say. And... She's a very beautiful woman suggesting these things. On a scale of one to ten, how would you define a doji cat? Oh, as far as physicality? Hotness, let's go physicality first. Definitely probably about a nine. She's a hard eight, man. I'll give her a hard eight. eight. Or a nine. She's a very beautiful. I wish woman. she had bigger boobs, but she's got such a nice butt. I'm just, boobs I'm can sure set to the can, side. I'm sure she I'm more can of handle a boob you. man myself, but I am too. I'm sure she can handle you though, I'm sure. Oh, she'd be a fun fuck. She'd what are the fun. other categories? The uh, music. Parameters. Music. Oh, right. music. So she, obviously the women you go first looks. Okay. You know, that's uh, um, again <laughs> folks, we jest. That's higher. We jest. That's that <laughs> but it's truth. But, uh, but you go for the looks and then uh musical talent, I think. Like, oh, she and can actually sing. Like, oh, okay. she is a decent singer. She She's uses a, good a bit singer. of she raps. She's a good uh, writer. She and writes a lot of her own shit. She does. And she definitely mixes a lot of R&B a lot of like Jamaican beats, which was cool. She does. Yes, she's well, from the Caribbean. Yeah, so she does use a lot of reggae beats, which is cool. Changes up a little bit. Nardwar did a very cool interview with her, um, and do, do, brought do, 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 up. Do, 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 I love do, do, do. Nardwar, man. He brought up uh, her father, who was a musician in the '80s. He had a cassette of her dad's music and gave it to her as a gift, and she was like, "Holy shit!" And her dad, you know, he probably never showed it that to her and stuff, but her dad was in music, and that I think is how she got her start, which I think is a lot of families you know but it's mainly about love and a lot of just those sort of elements i like doji cat man she's one of these uh britney spears chicks for the for the um urban population i guess you'd the say more or R&B but side. i think that what's happening is that these women that are trying to be turned out by companies are getting more educated on how to run themselves kind of like a business. And they're nice. getting their own money, which is really Good. cool because the company shouldn't make a ton of money off of these girls that are doing all their own shit. You know what I mean? If you're producing your own shows and you're fucking making your own money, hands off of it, yeah. I saw her do a fucking sponsored TikTok sh- that she did with yeah. JBL, the audio company. Sure. All she did was held up one of their little clippy Yeah, Yeah, I got, I got my speaker here. She went, jibble, jibble. Jibble, jibble. Jibble, jibble. And you know how much they probably said. paid her for that? <laughs> yeah. And that's the and crazy she, part. the caption was something like, they really let me do this as, Yo, the, as, yeah, the, as ad. the ad. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Yeah. And it probably worked. She probably, it probably... A lot of people were like, oh, gee, oh, yeah, yeah, man. We're talking about it right now. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's the tendrils of that. that exactly, that, that ripple effect. All right, that move, ripple effect. moving on then. Change it up. How'd you like the album? It was actually better than I expected. How many doji cats would you give it? Uh, well, cats that hang out in, do- in dojos. How many dojo cats? <laughs> dojo cats. So cats are that train in martial arts and hang out in these Capoeira dojos. cats. Yes. Capoeira, your Taekwondo cats, your uh, Krav Maga Aikido cats, cats, your Aikido <laughs> kitties, Steven Seagal cats. Yeah, <laughs> all those cats. How'd you like it, Trevor? I'd probably eight, probably uh, seven. All right, seven, seven and a half. That's not you bad pull because up the numbers in the air. That yeah, on video. Ah. Uh. Seven and a half. Well, this fi- this finger is more like a three quarters of a number. So that's it. Seven and a half. Yeah, we're right. trying to fill that upward space too. Remember, that's important. We're not throwing gang signs, folks. Hey, we keep it juicy, <laughs> juicy. We eat that lunch. <laughs> How does that not? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. It's like that's the perfect retort to anything. They ask Sir, you, you like you're doing eighty and a thirty-five, but I uh, keep it juicy, juicy, <laughs> and I eat that lunch. And he's like, "Step out the car with your fine ass." <laughs> I spotted shooting a bow and arrow into Hayward Field on a crowded track meet. Hey, but I keep it juicy, juicy, and I all eat right, that lunch. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> oh, okay. So. Damn it, man! We caught you carrying or, a bomb or into you the Special the, Olympics. <laughs> hey, I keep it juicy, juicy. Hey, like, or you could right, do right. the uh, <laughs> you could do the what's her name? God damn it, the big black chick. I always forget her name. Uh, that plays big the flute. Less. 
Lizzo. Lizzo. Yeah. Okay. You can do that Lizzo, yeah. Why? Or what, what's her or saying? I always forget well, that one. great. And then, well, they got to be great. Yeah, they got to be, yeah. And then she has another one. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm that bitch. She's got juice. I'm she's that said. bitch or some uh, shit. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I'm a, uh, I'm a hundred percent that exactly. bitch. That is the perfect thing to I say in any mean, scenario. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know how fast you were going? Nope, but I know I'm a hundred percent that bitch. <laughs> they're just right. like, what? It's at least as good as <laughs> just juice crank juice up juice. the Lizzo. They're just like, yeah. I can't write him a ticket. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Me on, <laughs> Trevor's a hundred percent that bitch. Oh. Woo! <laughs> so next one we want to talk about a future skit soon kind of do a spoof off Maybe main next justice. episode yeah but SNL main, we want to do kind of a spoof of a court thing like a court episode and we would do funny voices, of course, and have this. So maybe we would do some like silly visuals. I think that Brady could definitely throw could definitely throw in some funny things in there. He, we got a gavel too. We have a, a back massage thing that looks. You want to show that very gavel like. Yes. Order the back hear massage. ye, hear ye. <laughs> um, I think that we got the inspiration to do that because we really fell in love with that skit with uh, Jamie Fox and. Uh, Just some extent, but there's Justin Jason Timberlake as Sudeikis? the bailiff. What's the name? Of Jason it? Sudeikis. Yeah, he, he is the he, he is the, the judge. judge, and they have a very funny uh, cast with that. They have Charlie Day. Yes, that Charlie comes Day. in and he does uh, the. He's the like he's a mayor. The con- yeah, the concept yeah. is that he's a congressman. Yeah, he's a congressman. Uh, the concept is that a bunch of people that were in Katrina from New Orleans got relocated to Maine uh, so after the, the hurricane. So they brought the the southern like, culture. Like uh, and they took over the courts. Mardi Gras. And, yeah. So I was like, you're gonna have to deal with. The- with the gators and the swamps of Maine, boy, and the guy's like, he's like, what? Yeah, what is going on right and, and now? And one of the one of the <laughs> punishments, so one of the punishments for him, sure, uh, yeah, one of the punishments. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, the punishment that the judge gives him is that he's gonna have to eat the spiciest, oh. hottest, oh. sizzlingest oh. jambalaya. Oh. Yeah, and he's and you like, have a guy just what? Going, ah! In yeah. the background, and, and he's like, "You gonna be on that toilet, boy?" And then, <laughs> and then they they call order to the court, and then they're like, "Bring bang, in the bang, band," bang. and they just start playing. A, uh, when Mardi the Saints Gras come music. marching in, yeah. they just have a small parade come through the court, and, then, bam, bam, bam. and you always have like the southern ladies with the fans, like, "Oh, I do say, I do so. declare, good sir, I never in my life oh, seen I such never. a water waster." Yeah, it's so perfect. Or you have a guy dressed in like an alligator suit pops out and like, oh, got a little alligator over here. But so we're thinking we're gonna do. We're more, definitely gonna get the. Maybe do some like uh, some Eugene Justice or some some Oregon Justice. We'll think of something. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring up the Radiant Banger Main. Ideas. Banger Main in in Eugene, Oregon. Do you think I don't know. But I want, on, on a skit topic, real quick. Round Ball Rock is one of my favorite skits ever. I didn't even know it was called that. Okay. But what's what's Round Ball the, Rock? The, the, the brief. Summary is like they're pitching the fucking new hype song to NBC yeah. for basketball. The best new and it's like song. A, and it's a duo, and it's a guy yeah. with a keyboard, and this guy, a vocalist. And yes. Like, all right, hit the track. One, two, three, go. Boom. Here it goes. And it's the, it's the track we all know and love. And it's he goes, ba 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 basketball. Give me, give me, give me the ball. Because I'm going to take it. Ba 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 basketball. Give me, give me. And they're like, okay, all right. <laughs> one time with like, what if we did it without the singing? Or yeah, <laughs> and he's just like, he can't handle that idea. We're know? playing that's basketball. That's <laughs> what he got changed again? into. <laughs> right. But you can't. Can you imagine playing that? Any different than him being the singer? Do 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 basketball. I'm gonna dunk this. <laughs> yeah. Imagine playing that in the he's background. He's like, wait, what do you mean without the lyrics? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. Wait, he doesn't yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Or maybe you could have him do perfect. some death metal vocals. So instead. we should probably do this. We're gonna look up some good SNL skits that we want to recreate. Yeah, that are that are gonna be fun. I think to do on the podcast, <laughs> and we'll have the transcripts printed out or something, we'll and then them. we will reread them and, nice. and perform the scene. Why that not? Sounds creative and cool. I think like, so. Yeah. yeah. 
We're, we're stealing from other people, but definitely creative enough to be cool. Honestly, in this attention economy, with the exponentially <laughs> increasing amount of content, yep. when you homage something, you're yep. putting more eyeballs on that thing, too. Yeah, pretty much. You get a big pretty much. And we definitely, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, imitation is the highest yeah, form, form of flattery. flattery. Yeah, well, I don't I believe mean, that shit, but okay. But this is explicitly, like... like we're this saying, is gonna like, be hey, our we version. got it from the yeah, source. Yeah, we're not, not like trying to pass this on. The same exact Pulling thing. Your right arm around yeah, it. you yeah. can't do it. Set. You can't do it. Nah. We could throw in a few like Oregonian elements. Too. Time we got. Six fifty. Yeah, it's two minutes left. All right. Okay. Perfect. So somehow I'm like, let's not tell them exactly what time. Was. <laughs> yeah, let us not know. Do you want to do any cannabis corner at all? Um, we got done harvesting the plants. The weed came out really good. Uh, the weeds all trimmed. We ended up getting a little over uh, half a pound, which is real nice. Um, the one thing I kind of wish that I had done with these plants that I didn't really get the chance to because towards the end they needed to come up um, was stretch out the nutrients a little longer. Um, when you're feeding your plants, you're going to hit a peak of nutrients in your soil at least. And when you do that, you need to back down your nutrients. You need to have more of a watery solution to your plants. Because if you over newt them, um, you will fry the soil. You will fry the root system and you will start to kill your plants. That's something that happened towards the end. I overfed and got a little alkaline uh, in the soil. Um, so they had to come up faster than I wanted them to, but it was good timing because they were ready. Um, but yeah, just keep an eye on your EC and your pH as you're feeding. Uh, once you keep an eye on those two and you get good numbers consistently, overfeeding should be very difficult. All right. Yeah, that's what I got. All right, Trevor, you ready to play this one out? It might be a strobe light while you do it. Do it. Don't have epilepsy, do you? I hope. I hope. I hope we'll not. I hope so. We'll find You're out. You have to pay all the rent then, Chris. It's okay. Ready? Yes. One, two, here we go. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Sorry. Keep I'll it do, going. Keep I'll it do going. Some, I'll do a different song. <laughs> the effects. folks well that's going to be it for episode 70 uh we'll get a name on this one how do you guys think it went for our first video hey uh you know definitely glitchy but that's the way to go we'll go up from here i think it's a learning experience but we'll learn together and hopefully we're better tomorrow because of it as i'm becoming aware more of your discrete segments in the show we can have a little graphic pop up at each one or eventually Very a sound true. effect or something you know we're working on production folks we're going to get this shit off the ground sure sure all right peace Later.